Oh my, I'm having setbacks after setbacks here. I'm going backwards. Deep of death. I just pulled out the BIOS chip and I put the BIOS chip from the other Dolch in. Beep of life and it boots. It's this one chip that has a bad rotten bit. Uh, I took the label off. It's just a windbound flash ROM. So all I have to do is find a new old chip and with a little chance it's not protected so I can suck off the old BIOS uh, from the other chip and put it back in a new, new good uh, flash chip. Hooray! The boot has arrived from China and got me, hopefully, a programmer, an EEPROM programmer. Which actually some of my followers told me I don't need because you can program it straight from the computer. But I needed one of those tools anyhow. In particular because it comes with the extractor. Ta-da! And from nearby Taiwan. No, Hong Kong. From very nearby Hong Kong. I got, well this is China too now, mind you. I should have gotten my replacement chips. Here we go. Oh, new in the package. Never left the factory. Look at all I got for my 50 eBay bucks. Uh, if that works, I'll never complain about eBay again. That's a Mini Pro. TL866A So fortunately it comes with a help manual but this shows that I am in the wrong part of the world and definitely old style I can't understand a bit of Chinese unfortunately Spent my years at school learning German Oh well that was the wrong thing to learn. Okay, so I guess I select my IC <coughs> in a PLCC package. This one, there you go. Uh, information, yep, I have it. Okay. That's pretty well done, I'd say. <clears throat> and uh, how do I read the thing? Read. Read. But up, but up, but up, but up, but up. Read finished. Okay, where you go? It went here. Yeah, I see CPU code. So it read it. it's not protected. Yay. That's my BIOS. Uh, yeah, I read it. BIOS checksum error. BIOS from checksum error. Detecting floppy media. This is all good BIOS stuff. Okay, let's try to make a Good BIOS model chip. You are free. Okay. There it is. New chip. Let's try to program it. File. Protect device. Program. So it seems to have worked.
Yeah. Okay. So it programmed and read back like the original BIOS. See if it boots on that. All right. Good new BIOS. I can't remember which way it went in. I think it's like this. Okay. There's the screen. No siren sound. I bet you it's working. Yep. Looks like we are back in business. So I dumped the good and the bad bios and the good thing is that they're almost the same. All the way down there there appears to be a difference. Where is it? Oh, there it is. So quite a few differences. I don't know. It's hard to tell if the block just got corrupted or if it's a different BIOS uh, because if you go down later on there's one other part where they are definitely different right here. So this whole thing this is just the BIOS being different. And I guess this one is probably later, it has more code in it, and then after that is the same. So just for fun, I uh, pasted a little portion uh, from the damage, from the good BIOS and, and pasted it over the portion which I thought was damaged. Just try to see if that was the problem, that little, those little few bytes here. So I now have the uh, original chip with the little section that was reflashed over and all the rest intact and see if that does anything yep so that was a little bit of flash that was wrong, but with a whole block of it. Interesting. Yet another obstacle that Dolce has put in my way. Uh, I need to add a. I want to add a disc. Uh, which means I'd like to get the CD-ROM to become a slave and I couldn't find a freaking way to make this TX CD-ROM a slave. There was no straps available on the Dolch adapter. And this is a Dolch made adapter uh, who is totally non-standard. Uh, there's not even orientation for the ID cable. And I was pulling my hair out until I finally found the spec sheet for the thing. And it turns out and there is a pin uh, to select, uh, either do a cable select or to transform it from a master to a slave. And it was not even connected to anything. So I had to add this little wire, if this thing wants to focus. You can see it here. This is my extra wire that I had to put directly on the pin so it would finally become a slave. So here's my temporary mess of uh, cables and drives. On the first ID chain I have the original 13 gig drive and uh, the uh, super floppy. And on the other ID chain I have a 30 gig drive. 32 gig is the biggest it you can attach to this machine. And a, uh, the CD-ROM so I can uh, put a live CD to boot the machine and hopefully transfer the content of the empty partition on this bigger drive and then you know, swap that one out. And then I have yet another drive that's not hooked up yet. So this is, will be Linux. Here this will be DOS, Win98, WinXP and uh, WinNT. So with a bit of luck 
I have put all my uh, jumpers correctly on the discs and it will all be recognized there's a step I was at before the the, 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 the computer wouldn't boot anymore because of the BIOS meltdown let's see if we can recover nope not getting the master Gee not getting that one, not getting that one whoa I'm getting it, okay, that's not so good Okay, after futzing with the IDE cable a little bit more and plugging them in the right direction it should work better. Okay, it's gotten it. The first disc, the super floppy, the second disc 30 gig and the CD-ROM. Alright, so phew, finally we have hardware that's good enough uh, that we can start again.